Welcome to this webinar on Design Builder's newly re released climate analytics platform. I'm Dave Cocking and I'm genuinely delighted to be introducing Andy Tyndale as today's presenter. Andy co-founded Design Builder Software and is now the company chair. With decades of experience in building energy simulation, he has a wealth of knowledge from his work in design consultancies, academia and research. Andy is deeply committed to removing unnecessary barriers to wide-scale adoption of the latest building simulation technology. He has an enduring interest in weather data, matching data to the application, and developing Design Builder's Climate Analytics Weather Data Service to become the go-to place for building performance simulation weather data. Climate Analytics is Andy's newest baby, so there's no better person to talk you through it. So I'll now leave you in Andy's capable hands. Over to you, Andy. Thank you, Dave, for the introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. Today's presentation will focus mainly on a demonstration of the climate analytics software, but I'll start by setting the scene with some slides. Design Builder Climate Analytics is a new weather data tool developed specifically to meet the needs of building energy modelers. It's based on a huge database of high quality hourly and daily weather data covering the period from 1970 to the present day across the globe. It includes a range of analysis tools that can help you select the most appropriate data for design purposes and gain insights into the climate of the project site. The concept is to provide a one-stop shop to access all the weather data you're likely to need for your modeling projects. More specifically, Climate Analytics provides an easy to use web-based tool that allows you to quickly access weather data recorded at over 43,000 weather stations. The data is sourced from measurements made at weather stations as well as data from satellites. It gives you access to the three main types of weather data, typical, design, and actual years. And the base historical data can be modified to account for future climate, urban heat islands, and other extreme weather scenarios. A set of graphical analysis tools can guide your modeling approach, especially when choosing design data, and for gaining clearer insights into the climate history and any trends related to climate change. As well as providing access to the extensive climate analytics databases, the tool also allows access to several important external data libraries. And I'll cover all these points in more detail in the course of the presentation. Clearly, hourly weather data is an important input for all types of building energy simulations whether the purpose is for energy or environmental performance projection, HVAC system design, compliance with building energy codes, certification through schemes such as LEED and BRIAM, or overheating assessments, other applications which are increasingly important these days are post-occupancy measurement and verification studies using digital twin calibrated models, and stress testing to check building performance under future climate and extreme weather events. Also, annual climate-based daylighting studies for methods such as SDA and UDI require hourly weather files as key inputs. Before we move on to look at the software, here's a quick overview of the presentation so you can see what will be covered. We'll start with an overview of the tool functionality, how to access it, and the main elements of the user interface, followed by a review of the three main weather file types and how they can be downloaded. Then I'll move on to talk about creating weather files for custom locations not covered by a nearby station, and also customizing weather files by modifying them to account for future climate, urban heat island effects, and extreme weather scenarios. I'll show you how to use the graphical data analysis tools to select weather years for different design applications 
and to review the historical climate and any trends. And finally, we'll look at how to access the data from external sources, such as Climate.1 Building, Energy Plus, and White Box Technologies, as well as some official national data. The Design Builder website includes a page with climate analytics, product details, and purchasing options under the software tools menu section. The climate analytics tool itself can be accessed from this green button here. Clicking on it takes you to the analytics platform. Here you can register to create an account and sign in. To register, click on the link and enter your details, including an activation code if you've already ordered a license. With your login credentials set, you can sign into the website. Once signed in, you're taken to the Climate Analytics opening page which shows a map with the weather stations displayed as colored icons. On the top, le top left of the page is a side panel. This provides options to define what you'd like to do in your session. We'll explore these a little later. There's a zoom control, which I'll use to zoom in and now pan to northern USA. You can also zoom and pan using the mouse. And there's also a context sensitive info help icon uh, in the top left there too. The legend allows you to filter the stations displayed based on the quality of the available design year data. To access the data for a weather station, click on the colored icon to open the station dialog. On the station tab, you can see an overview of the station statistics. On the urban heat island tab, you can apply temperature offsets to account for urban heat island effects. On the analysis tab, you can review the climate data for the station on an annual, monthly or daily basis. And on the download tab, you can define the data you require and then download it. We'll be looking at each of these tabs in more detail. But before continuing, I'll return to the slides to explain the three types of hourly weather data. The three broad categories of weather files are typical years, design years, and actual years. Each of these is used for different purposes in building energy modeling. You'll already no doubt be very familiar with typical year weather files that are widely used in building simulation. Typical years are representative of long-term weather compiled from 20 to 30 or more years of data using one of the TMY, TRY, IWEC, etc. methodologies. They're assembled to match the long-term data for a particular location using a set, of, a set of statistical measures. They're used for general purpose energy simulations, compliance and certification analysis. Design years are usually based on a specific year of weather data, where the year is selected for some extreme characteristic, such as the warmest, coldest, or most humid sequence of days. They're often used for extreme scenario modeling, such as overheating analysis, as well as for heating and, and cooling system sizing applications. Some modification may be made to the base data, depending on the requirement. Actual years contain a specific year of weather data. They're often used for post-occupancy analysis by developing calibrated models and digital twins, where the simulation results are compared to actual utility bills or other measured data. These models can be used in applications such as measurement and verification studies, control optimization for fault detection and diagnostics, for example, when troubleshooting system controls, 
retrofits and energy conservation measure savings calculations, such as when using the IPMVP protocol. Returning to climate analytics, I'll show you how each of these three types of weather files can be accessed. To illustrate, I'll choose a new station in Nottingham in the UK. On the download tab, you can choose whether you wish to download design year or actual year weather data. First, we'll talk about design years. Design year data contains both the typical weather files as well as design weather files. Temperature, wind, humidity data for all of these weather file types are generated from real data measured at weather stations. The solar radiation data comes from gridded data from both ground stations and satellite sources. Typical year weather data is made up of a collection of typical months selected from a specific 20 to 30 year period. All climate analytics typical year data comes from the ISD, uh, design year databases. And a range of methods are available for selecting the typical months and then automatically compiling them into typical year files. The typical year methods include TMY, based on one of the ANSI, ASHRAE or ISO methods for the period 1970 to 2010 and 1995 to 2015. Or the TRY method based on the SIBSI definition over the period 1984 to 2013. The other options provide quick ways to download design years based on commonly used criteria such as warmest year, or the year with the most extreme four-day heat wave. There are more flexible ways to design, sorry, to select design years using the analysis tab, which I'll cover later. But now we'll look at actual year data. For actual years, you can simply select the year although there are some other more advanced settings. Actual year data is based on hourly values from a dense grid of data points from the NASA hourly database. These weather files contain actual data for a specific location and a specific year. Actual year data is available for all stations from 1980 right up to the previous month of the current year. To illustrate, I'll download 2023 data for Nottingham and load it into the Design Builder Results Viewer. Results Viewer is a free tool that can be used to view data for Energy Plus simulation results, CSV files and EPW weather files. It can be downloaded from the download section of the Design Builder website. Now the EPW file is loaded, I'll display the dry bulb temperature and the global horizontal and direct normal solar radiation on our second graph. The hourly data can also be displayed and exported as a grid of values. Results Viewer also provides a heat map option, so you can view a year of data in one go and easily identify diurnal and seasonal patterns. I'll show you a heat map for dry bulb temperature. This plots the hourly temperatures over the year using color bands with the day of the year on the x-axis and the time of day on the y-axis. And it provides a nice clear indication of when the coldest periods occur and also the warmest periods. And that's all about what I wanted to say uh, on actual year data for now. 
I'll show you a case study later on where climate analytics actual year data is used as a part of the model calibration process. Now let's return to the slides to review the options for customizing the standard data. Climate analytics includes various ways to customize the standard historical data. We can break these down into data, data modification, where the basic changes are made to the data to create extreme scenario cases, morphing to account for urban heat island temperature uplifts and the impact of future climate change, and creating custom locations by interpolating data from nearby stations. We'll look at each of these in turn. An important aspect of design years is that, that, is that they allow data customization to create extreme scenarios for design simulations. For example, you can create weather files in which every day has clear skies, which can be useful for summer overheating and cooling system sizing simulations. Alternatively, dark skies can be applied for heating system sizing applications. You can also set zero wind for nap vent and overheating assessments to model worst case scenarios when wind pressure is not available to drive nap vent flows. These data customization techniques involve making the same changes across the whole year. To apply future climate and urban heat island temperature uplifts, a more sophisticated treatment is required because the modifications vary with time. In these cases, a data morphing technique is applied to create smooth transitions between days and months. Custom locations can be created for projects where a nearby weather station is not available. Unlike other tools where gridding is carried out without any user control, climate analytics allows you to apply your knowledge of the region to select between two and four base stations to interpolate between to create a new virtual station. This manual approach allows you to ensure that not that only stations with a similar climate to the project site are used in the interpolation. Now back to climate analytics, so you can see these customization tools in action. As you can see from the dialogue, there are options to modify the design year data based on future projections, sky type, humidity, and wind. There are also configuration options for more advanced users. Let's have a quick look at some of the main design year options, starting with the wind drop list. When simulating a nap vent system, the designer might wish to use a design file with no wind to ensure worst case scenarios are checked. Likewise, when simulations are being used for heating system sizing, we can select an option to generate weather data with no solar radiation to check that the heating design doesn't rely on solar gains. Or we can select an option to apply a clear sky scenario for worst case summer design simulations. Next, we'll move on to look at analyzing building performance under future climate conditions. Climate analytics allows you to select from a range of options based on IPCC future climate scenarios. Referring to the help provides more information about each option, and I'll show you how to access that a bit later. Looking at the Hadley datasets, for example, we can select from scenarios based on high, medium, and low emissions for various future periods. The list you can see here includes the institute whose modeling data created, whose modeling created the data, the scenario that the data represents, and the future period covered. To explore this briefly, I'll show you a set of weather, future weather files for our Nottingham location so I loaded into Results Viewer earlier.
To prepare this analysis, I selected four future climate change scenarios based on the Hadley Center data for the period 2070 to 2099 for high, medium high, medium low, and low emission scenarios. With the data loaded, we can compare the hourly predicted dry bulb temperatures for each case against the base historical TMY data. As you can see, the predicted temperature profiles increase with the level of emissions, the high emission scenarios giving rise to the highest temperatures. The wide range of these predictions illustrates the potential for socio-economic decisions made now to significantly impact the future climate. Climate analytics allows you to incorporate the various IPCC future climate scenarios into your design assessments, so you can check the resilience of today's designs in future climates. At the end of the presentation, I'll show you how to access a climate a case study on our website, which illustrates the application of future climate data in a climate change adaptation study. Of course, urban areas can be significantly warmer than the surrounding rural areas, and climate analytics allows you to account for these urban heating effects by adding temperature offsets to the recorded station data. I'll tick the Use Urban Heat Island Offset checkbox and then click on the Select a UHI button. And this temporarily closes the station dialog, allowing you to select an urban heat island region from the map. I'll select the urban heat island for Nottingham here. And this takes us back to the station dialog. You can see that Climate Analytics has picked up the day and nighttime temperature offsets for the Nottingham urban area that we selected. This data was loaded from the NASA Urban Heat Island database. In simple terms, these two offset temperatures are applied by adding the daytime offset value during the daytime hours and the nighttime offset value during nighttime hours. In practice, it's a bit more sophisticated than that and a morphing technique is used to apply the offsets so as to ensure a smooth day-night transition. These urban heat island offsets may be applied in cases where the weather station is located in a rural area and the project site is in an urban area. Alternatively, the offsets can be inverted for cases where the weather station is in an urban location and the project site is rural. Next, we'll take a look at the Create New Location option. This allows you to generate weather data for a precise site location by triangulating between existing weather stations. The base stations can be manu manually selected to allow you to choose weather stations with a climate that you may know represents the project site. This will often be more accurate than using an automated gridding approach. To illustrate, I'll create a new location in West Derby, where there is currently no station. To start, uh, I'll make sure that I'm zoomed in so that we can see the local area. Then I'll click on the Create New Location option. And this opens the station dialog in a special mode with the tools for setting up a new virtual station. To show that, I'll start by entering the name of our new station. So entering West Derby. And then click on the Get Location button to select the location. This closes the weather state, the station dialog, and takes us back to the map where we can select the position of the new station. Once we click on the map to select the location, the station dialog reopens with the latitude and longitude of the new station filled out. Then we can select the base stations we wish to use to interpolate. 
For this example, I'll select Nottingham Watnall, Nottingham East Midlands, and Sellerhead near Stoke-on-Trent as the base stations. We'll leave the elevation text box blank, allowing climate anal analytics to interpolate the elevation. We could have entered the elevation ourselves if we had that information. I'll quickly review the setup to check all is well. Yep, that looks fine. So I'll return to the station dialog and press the interpolate button to actually create the virtual station. You can see that the station has been renamed as West Derby. And I can now analyze or download data for the new virtual station. Before I show the analysis capabilities, I'll summarize the main applications of the analysis tools in slides. These are the main applications and I'll cover each one in turn. One of the most important applications is to provide the data required for an evidence-based method for selecting design years for overheating and HVAC system sizing simulations. There are various ways to define warm and cold years, so it's important to clearly understand what weather data is required for your simulations. For example, should you use the year with the highest average dry bulb temperatures or the year with the highest instantaneous temperature or the year with the most extreme heat wave? In which case, how do you define the severity of the heat wave? Using the maximum temperatures or daily averages? How many days should be considered for a heat wave? Four days, 10 or 20 days? And is it necessary to account for humidity? Fortunately, Climate Analytics can provide data to help you select a design year for all of these cases. These graphs illustrate three of the methods that can be used to define the warmest year based on the dry bulb temperatures. Graph on the left shows an annotated output from the analysis tab for one to four day heat waves. The top set of four lines show the maximum daily temperatures averaged over the warmest sequence of one, two, three, and four days. This data can be used to quickly identify the years with the most extreme heat waves based on maximum daily temperature. This may be ideal for commercial building applications which are generally occupied during the daytime when temperature peaks occur. But for residential buildings, it might be better to choose heat waves based on average daily temperatures to ensure that the warm nighttime periods are also included. That data isn't included on these graphs, but Climate Analytics does provide it, as we'll see later. The graph on the right shows the maximum and minimum hourly temperatures recorded for each year. That's the orange and blue lines, while the green line represents the average temperatures. This graph could be useful in cases where maximum instantaneous or average temperatures are needed for your simulations. There are various ways to identify the warmest years, and this table shows the years that could be selected for our Nottingham location. The top three are the ones I mentioned earlier. The year with the all-time high, the average high, and the four-day heat wave. The table also shows the years that could have been selected if three other methods offered by climate analytics have been used. These are the bottom three lines shown in blue text. As you can see, each method indicates a different year. The takeaway point is that climate analytics provides various methods that can be used to identify extreme hot and cold weather periods. You should consider what are likely to be the worst case weather scenarios for your project and choose your design years accordingly. 
However, it won't always be clear which selection method to use. And in this case, you can download weather data for a range of worst case years and check designs using all of them. In our example, you could download all the design years in this table and use parametric analysis to see how a building performs, performs across the range of worst case weather scenarios. The Design Builder program help includes a worked example which shows how to check the building performance across multiple weather files using parametric analysis. It includes step-by-step -step instructions explaining how to set up a parametric overheating study based on adaptive discomfort using weather data as the variable. And also how to plot the results for all weather files together in, together in histogram form. Other applications for the analysis tools include reviewing historical climate trends going back to 1970, and also looking forward in time by accessing the underlying data to generate future climate change scenarios by morphing historical data. Climate Analytics provides access to all of the data in its ISD design year databases. So you can export, for example, temperature, solar intensity, humidity, wind speed or precipitation data on an annual, monthly or daily basis for downstream analysis. Another important application is to drill down in more detail to check the quality of the, of the design year data. This can provide deeper insights beyond the basic colour-coded categorisation used for the, for the station markers. In short, all of the yearly, monthly and daily data in the Climate Analytics Design Year databases is available for review and extraction for further analysis and for use as a part of a rigorous data selection process. Let's go back now to Climate Analytics so you can see how this works. On the analysis tab, the primary selection option is the interval, which includes yearly, monthly, and daily options. Depending on the interval selected, there are different data sets available. I'll start with the yearly op interval option. As I mentioned earlier, one important application of these tools is to help identify design years suitable for the project requirements. The top eight options here are the most useful for system sizing and overheating applications based on extreme hot or cold periods. I'll show you how to access the graph that we looked at on the slide just now with extreme hot and cold day sequences. We saw earlier that the worst case four day heat wave was in 2022 with an average maximum daily temperature of 35 degrees centigrade over the four days, the highest in the data set. This would be a good design year for assessing short sequences of very warm days. However, in passive nap vent buildings, heat can accumulate over a period of warm days. And even buildings with high thermal mass may not stay cool after several days of very warm weather. So when assessing a thermally heavyweight building, a design year with longer sequence of hot days is also needed. So let's look at the greater than four day sizing graph, which shows the same data, but for extended heat wave periods. This graph shows that the year with the most extreme 20 day heat wave was 1976. This would be a good year to use for checking the overheating performance of thermally massive buildings. Another important application of the analysis tools is to check the amount of high quality data available for stations of interest. The ISD dataset is not complete for all stations and all years. 
and in cases where measured data for our station is missing, the gap is filled using gridded data. The coloured station markers on the map give a quick high-level indication of the amount of high-quality data available for each station. And ideally, you'll only use the data for the stations marked in green. However, other stations also have value, especially if the year we need data for is well covered. To illustrate, I'll, I'll select the yearly measured observation option, which allows you to drill down into the availability data to learn more about which years have the data gaps. Here you can see that for our Nottingham station, the data is more or less complete, going right back to 1973. But let's look at the nearby Leek Thorncroft station, which is displayed using a light green station marker. The graph here on the analysis tab shows that this station has high quality data going back to 2005. So it would be reasonable to use this station when downloading more recent data, set, data sets. Now back to our Nottingham station. Next, we'll review, review the analysis data available at monthly intervals. When the monthly interval is selected, you can also select a year range. For monthly data, the analysis, graphs, the, the analysis graphs display the average monthly values over the range of years selected. Also, where appropriate, the minimum and maximum monthly values are displayed. I'll show you how this works in a minute, but first a quick review of the list of monthly data that can be displayed. We'll start by looking at monthly temperatures. This graph shows the average, maximum and minimum monthly temperatures over the selected year range 1980 to 2022. The average max and average min orange and yellow curves represent the average daily maximum and minimum temperatures for each month. We can also narrow the range of years to a single year. In this case, because we're only displaying data for one year, the average max data is the same as max t and average min is the same as min t. Now let's take a look at the monthly climate change data. I'll select the future climate changes option. The graph is not displayed in this case as the format of the data does not lend itself so easily to plotting but you can access the raw data by pressing the View Data button. This data can be copied for pasting into a spreadsheet for further analysis. As you can see, for each month, there are specific offsets for temperature, solar, wind, humidity, and precipitation. The first column is the code for the research institution, then the code for the scenario, followed by the year and month, and the remaining columns include the offset data to be applied to the minimum and maximum daily temperatures for each month, as well as the changes to wind speed, relative humidity, solar radiation, and precipitation. The precise meaning of each of these outputs is documented in the Climate Analytics Help. Next, we'll take a quick look at the daily analysis data. This time I'll show you the daily precipitation data. As for the monthly data, with the daily interval set, you can select the year range. 
The data plotted for each day is the average for each day of the year. And as before, this and all the other data on the tab bank can be copied for pasting into a spreadsheet for review and analysis. Hopefully that gives you a feel for how climate analytics provides access to the data in ways that make it easy for you to select design years, analyze the climate history and project forward into the future. As well as data from the climate analytics databases, you can also access pre-generated hourly weather data from three of the most important international weather file set data sets and also some official national data. Firstly, there's the climate.onebuilding.org library, a widely used repository of typical year TMYX weather data covering more than 17,000 locations worldwide. It's developed and curated by Drew Crawley and Linda Laurie, the original developers of the EPW weather file format. And data from this site can be accessed at no charge. Also, you can access the Energy Plus weather file library provided by NREL, covering nearly 2,500 locations. And the White Box Technologies library has nearly 14,000 locations with actual and typical year data. The weather files on the White Box website were developed primarily from historical weather data archived in the NOAA ISD database. Also, official national data for Sweden and the UK can be accessed through climate analytics. Data for the Swedish SVEBI and BBR Swedish standards can be downloaded can be downloaded directly free of charge. And the UK SIBSI hourly weather data can be accessed through Climate Analytics via the Design Builder website where it can be purchased. Now I'll show you how to access these external libraries in the software. I'll start by selecting the external sources option in the legend. This opens a new legend where you can choose which libraries you'd like to access. To illustrate the process, let's zoom into the London area and select the London Gatwick weather station. As you can see on the external sources tab for this station, a range of data is available for each of the three repositories. You can click on any of these links to download the data. That just about concludes this climate analytics overview. But before we close, I'd like to point out some additional resources you can use to learn more about climate analytics. Firstly, there's the online help documentation. Also, the product information page on our website, which provides an overview of the software functionality, as well as some useful links and resources. And a case, a set of case studies showing how climate analytics has been used on some previous projects. Let's take a quick look at each of these. The help documentation can be accessed from the top toolbar in Climate Analytics. It includes detailed guidance on how to use the software, as well as useful background information on topics like data sources and quality, and future climate change scenarios. Also, the product description page on the Design Builder web website, which I showed you earlier, provides a useful summary of the features with links to various sources, in resources including climate analytics itself, the purchasing pages, and at the bottom of the page, the case studies. Mm -hmm. 
There are three case studies so far illustrating the use of climate analytics in real projects. The first one shows how a national hourly weather data set was created for South Africa. The second discusses the use of future weather files in performance evaluations of an educational building in London when designing for resilience in climate change scenarios. And the third one looks at the use of actual year weather files in developing calibrated digital twin models. The method used is based on the SIBSI TM63 protocol following ASHRAE guideline 14. These case studies are well worth a look to find out how users have applied the climate analytics tools in their work. And that brings us to the end of the presentation.